Hey there, guys. Frank and Matic here with Sis. Hi. And we've got a game. I've skipped the title screen and a bunch of demo mode to get to the plot that the game gives you. While this goes on, I do want to put a warning here up front that if you uh, have problems with flashing lights, you probably want to skip to about the 5 minute 10 second mark once we get past the uh, introduction here. And even after that, there's still going to be a bit of flashing, so it might be better for you to avoid this video entirely. But the worst of it is the first stage, which ends at 5 minutes and 10 seconds in. This is going to be Sess's first time seeing this game. That did not come out of Japan. I'm using a translated ROM for your guys' benefit. But I wanted to show it off because it is, uh... It does some interesting stuff, graphically, on the old Famicom. You know, I never noticed the really awful, like, bounding box around the pilot sprite in the intro here, until just now. Did you see that really large nuclear reactor in the previous scene? Yeah. That's New York, by the way. I... alright. Because <laughs> there's the Statue of Liberty! I mean, there's multiple Statues of Liberty. Oh no, the aliens broke the alliance. So maybe it's not THE Statue of Liberty. Anyways, this is Tetrastar, the fighter. Also, here's my ugly warning. Now is the chance! Skip to this timestamp. If you don't want to deal with awful flashing. Speaking of the Statue of Liberty, uh... Bye. Yeah. So we start off kind of... Dear God. So we start off kind of, uh, right in the mix of things here. And given that you have to sit through a lot of demo to see the plot... This is me checking my controls. You gotta sit through a lot of plot... or not plot, demo, to see the plot. You can just hit start and have no idea what's going on. Cool. Presumably the manual said something about it, but who knows. Anyways, this is a Harrier-style game, as you can see. I would say, overall, it's probably one of the easier Space Harrier-style games to finish. There's only one spot that's particularly difficult. Anyways, those alarms and flashing ships flying into the background, it's very important to shoot those down. If you fail to shoot those down, they will blow up a building in the background. And if they blow up too many buildings in the background, uh... Well, we'll see what happens at the end of the video. But for now, just know that you need to shoot those down. This really is very flashy, yikes. Yeah, this level is very bad. We're sitting in, like, a well-lighted room kind of far away from the screen, and it's still painful. It gets significantly less bad after this. The entire game is also scored with classical music, which is... nice, I think. And also free. Much like the, uh... Nintendo slash Famicom port of Space Harrier itself, the closest sprites get to you is not super big. But I have a less difficult time telling when things are in hitting range of my ship in this than I do in uh, Harrier, because the shots change color a little bit. They get a little bit lighter in color as they approach, which helps deal with the... Uh, size issue. I will say this level also goes on a little longer than it really needs to. 
Yeah. The rest of the game is fairly zippy, but this first level is just, like, the worst. <laughs> the game does not make a strong first impression. But it's over. Yay! We've saved New York. Except for, do you know Mega Me? See, it's New York. <laughs> okay. You have the tiniest protest. Oh no, our, our buddy Omega got captured by the bad guys from Rolling Thunder. The robot dog? The robot dog, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Our buddy Omega. We gotta save him. I guess the reason I never really noticed the bounding box around the pilot sprite is every other time he appears in the game in that form, he's on a solid black background so you can't see it. He just kind of stands out in the hangar. Anyways, yeah, gotta rescue Omega. And you might notice we got some buddies with us. Quite a few buddies. We have, in fact, 30 of them. They, uh, serve no practical gameplay purpose, but keeping them alive will get you more points. And how you keep them alive is by... functionally your kill rate in the levels. Enemies that you miss have a chance of taking out your dudes. A dice roll? I'm not entirely certain how it works, mechanically. But the main the main thrust of it is try and kill everything if you can, which is very difficult. This game is not really bad about murdering you over and over again, but it is very difficult to hit everything. Your ship is not super fast. Like that? No, those guys aren't going yet. Okay. It's also a little difficult to tell when something is gone for good or when something is just zooming past you. And we eat our first death in stage two. Oh no. What's up with that hole on the moon? Oh, you'll see. I'm I mean, I guess you'll see. I don't get it. But you'll see what his purpose is. I'm assuming it's something the Bale built. Based on what it does once we get past this chunk. This is the stage where shots start tracking you a little bit. And that slowly gets better over time. Anyways, that hole on the moon. Oh is gosh. firing missiles at us now. That's rude. Get out of here, hole on the moon. You can shoot him down. And they do track you decently well, but because you can shoot them down, that's not really to their benefit. What's up with this, like, tiny mushroom crowd? Alien chips. chips. Alien chips. <laughs> Obviously. Mushrooms. Look at that. I mean, there's only really one, uh, two enemies that actually look like ships, in my opinion, in this game. And now we got these things. You cannot kill these, you gotta dodge them. And this part I found, if you go up high, they have a much harder time hitting you than if you actually try and thread the needle through the middle. These ones look like UFOs. Now we gotta shoot down this space cube. Cool. And pick up the space egg that our robot buddy is in, apparently. That's weird. Anyways, we got him. What if you miss the egg? I don't think it was you. What if you shoot the egg? Your shots bounce off of it. Oh. And now we have 
our first two secondary weapons. One button will fire your gun, and one button will fire your gun, and also the sub weapon. You have a limited number? You have a limited number. We have 15 of each right now. And even though I just checked my controls, I totally botched it up and waste a bunch of my ammo. Hit the wrong button for a while. Good job. The wide is cluster bombs that you drop on the ground, making them completely useless in this stage. The AAM are anti-air missiles, which are probably one of the better weapons if you're not just, like, firing them uselessly into the void. There we go. <laughs> the anti-air missiles will attempt to lock on and hit things that are threatening you, making them very good. As you can see. They aren't perfect. If you fire them and the things are too far away, they do have a chance of missing still. But they make for a very good defensive weapon if you're getting a little swamped. So the end of this stage shows what I was talking about. But this is the only stage where you get a clear visual of this. <laughs> you never see this again. That one guy. No. There's just, like, a number of dudes missing every time you get to another, like, transition scene. With no explanation. Having only one guy be killed is the best I've ever done <laughs> in this first part. We made it into the warp, though. With... with most of our buddies. That seems like a bad idea, but, uh... Yeah... I do drop some quick saves here and there, but I don't use them. That was in case of, uh, technical issues. These things are awful. You can kill them, but they start moving so quick when they're down to their last segment that it's not easy. What was that bubble you picked up? That gave us some more, uh, sub weapon ammo. I think that one gave us more wide. That one's an eyeball. Do you see it? Yep. That is definitely an eyeball. Yep. The weird space snakes. That will eventually go away, as it just did. You do get a little voice clip when you switch, uh... ...weapons, but it's a little hard to hear over the music most of the time. So I want to know why, if everybody else just, like, dies if you miss somebody, why do they bother sending a whole entourage with you? Presumably they're also fighting in the background, but you don't get to see that. Kind of like how supposedly your buddies in Star Fox would kill enemies you missed, but in fact just never really did. You want to give these electrical barriers a like extra second after it looks like they've passed, because they can, in fact, still kill you if you go down too soon after they seem to have left the screen. Can you go around them? No. Oh. And these tanks are probably the most difficult part of this stage, if you want to try and actually kill them. I don't understand the hitbox of these bombs at all, because you'll see me drop them directly on things and have them do nothing and then drop them nowhere near things and have them kill them. <laughs> All right. It's very confusing, but if you watch, you'll see it happen. I forgot to check. I don't know if the anti-air missiles can actually hit these tanks or not. You would think no, but... Like that. <laughs> Weird. Like, it's clearly not just killing everything on the screen, but... I do kind of like the way the ground on the roads look, though. Who 
made the roads like this? I assume those are roads. I don't know, though. I mean, this planet just has gray ground. Now with the checkerboard, familiar to, uh, Harrier fans, we have our boss. We need to shoot that gray bit when it opens up. It like also big old light bulb. releases some little drones that drop missiles that are extremely easy to dodge. This boss is basically no threat unless you fall asleep at the wheel. In other words, I'd never be able to beat it. Yeah, probably. If I really want to, you can actually go down to the ground and shoot the missiles before they uh, launch, but it's not really worth it. And it's dead. Leading to this bizarre effect in the background as the... Uh, yeah, this is unsettling. It gets worse. I do like the fire falling off of the uh, gray thing, though. The thing in the background goes absolutely nuts, though. Look at this. Oh my goodness, stop. <laughs> I'm not entirely certain what that thing is supposed to be, but they refer to going to a base, so I'm guessing that's the base. <laughs> okay. Because they fly to it. Some nice moonlight sonata here. Is our buddy Omega? Also, we got a holographizer a we white. can use to cloak our ship. In effect, that in this cutscene looks absolutely unconvincing. <laughs> a novel idea. We're gonna disguise ourselves as a TIE fighter. <laughs> Anyways, this looks terrible in this scene right here. This looks absolutely unconvincing. Yeah, perfect. Good. <laughs> that's that's completely fine. No problems there. Still got 22 dudes alive. Still doing a bit above average for my normal count. I'm glad that they, like, hold their formation. Okay, so this, this, this stage is interesting. If you can get through here without getting touched by anything and without shooting... You can go through a lot of this stage without getting any actual danger your way. So naturally, recording it, I, uh... I botch it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> There's also the one time in the game, well, one of two times in the game where you can get hit and not lose a life. Now it looks like you might want to fly through the middle of those things, but do not do that. They will instead try to close on you if you do that. Oh. Which you can dodge, but it's easier to just not engage. And about this point is when they would start shooting at you anyway. These little hockey things are a pain in the butt, but they're not as bad as ones near the end of the stage. We approach the next boss. You can see it rising in the background. The green silos? Yes. Though cool. they're not green silos. What are they? Nuclear silos? <laughs> Those are guns. What? Alright. These hoppy things are a pain in the butt because they actively try to dodge your shots. Look, there's a big red button. Do we get to push it? Uh, we're gonna blow it up. Oh. That's like pushing it, right? Kinda. This is a base that we're going to destroy. Okay. Or possibly a computer. I think it's a computer. 
Also, you want to kill that guy in the middle carrying the bubble. Which I just barely did. Because he drops a very important capsule for you. Which, as mentioned in the text down below, will give us a new weapon. Also, we got the napalm to no fanfare, but it's useless. Alright. <laughs> this thing, you need to shoot the head of to kill it, and uh, I flew right into its bullet. Good job. But this game is pretty kind about its checkpoints for most of it, so we're right back at this thing. Only takes one shot. And now we have the bio cannon, which is arguably the best weapon if you're looking for pure offense. In the game? Yep. It fires out a ring that will, in fact, just murder things. And I crashed right into that TIE Fighter. Good job. But again, game is pretty good about its checkpoints, so here we are, right back. <laughs> and this time I actually used the bio cannon a bit. It's hard to see, but a ring of stars shoots out. And we need to shoot those balls at the bottom, as I mentioned at the bottom there. But for the most part, if the ring from the bio cannon hits something, it dies. Why do they put their base on ball bearings? An excellent question. But we get another healthy score boost. Yeah. Swapping right back to the anti-air missiles. This is just you need to survive this uh, onslaught to get away. Which isn't too bad as long as you, for the most part, stay on top of uh, shooting those TIE Fighters as they pop up. The one that's shooting, you is the, shooting at you is the yellow one, and it only shoots at where you were. So as long as you keep moving, it won't hit you. Though your ship has clearly been hit a lot. No matter how well you do, it always looks like that. I want to live on Earth with humans. Now, I think Omega is supposed to be from another planet. It's not really made clear. But, according to the intro, when the humans first found, first met with the, uh, the uh, Bale, the Ball, the Bale, B A A L, those guys. They gave us the ability to travel faster than light, so... And then they tried to murder us? Then years later, they decided to go evil, yeah. Weird. Some rebellion came by to be like, hey, those guys are bad news, which is why we built the Tetra Star in the first place. But then it was peaceful for so long that we were like, well, maybe we don't need it. Anyways, these are transports full of uranium, as mentioned, and we probably don't want uh, quite this much uranium getting there. Look at all that getting through. Yeah, it doesn't actually matter how many of them you shoot down. They're just extra points for all intents and purposes, but it's more important to kill these things that will actually try to kill you. We'll get another crack at those transports I get by anyway. The sound of your ship's gun gets very annoying after a while. Yeah. Now that we've filled space with uranium dust. It's fine. And more TIE fighters here, and this stage also has the big boy. All he's trying to do is crash into you. And it absolutely will until you get a rough idea of where it's going to go. So I think it goes in the same pattern pretty much every time. I can just imagine that this is actually the sound tra track that's going on inside of the ship cabin. A pilot have, and or Omega have very sophisticated tastes. 
So now that those guys are gone, we can just uh, take out a few waves of these transports unhindered. no longer on here. We got these, uh, goofy satellite-looking things. Here you can see that shot tracking actually, uh... Kicking in. Very, very obviously, uh... Now we got this thing, which is... bizarre in that it's not really a threat to you actively. Like, it will eventually shoot at you, but it's... It, it takes its sweet time about it, let's say. I might also notice that despite the fact that I've died several times, I still have five lives left. This game is very... Very friendly about handing you extra lives, so as long as you're not dying constantly, you're probably going to be able to clear it. With the possible exception that I mentioned at the beginning, that we have not gotten to yet. <laughs> and now we're at the boss of this stage, which is probably one of the harder ones. Some diamonds. These things are all folding guns, and they all have four guns on them. You need to, you need to break all the guns. And as you break more and more guns, they start firing at you faster and faster, so the last few actually become a real pain in the butt. Maybe using the missile sword of the bio cannon would have helped a bit here, but uh not totally sure. It's actually the cleanest I've done this. Usually these guys get me a couple of times. No, you can only hit it when it opens to shoot at you. There's so many. As you see, now we've got less. They, they start firing a lot more frantically. But they don't always shoot when they open. Getting those last couple of hits in is a real pain in the front, though. <laughs> also, one of the failings of the generous checkpoint system is that bosses always put you back to the start of the boss fight. So if you get hit by that last gun, congratulations, you can do that whole thing all over again. We are now going into the next to last level of the game. It's not a very long game. We thought we destroyed their biocomputer leader on that other planet, but it turns out that wasn't him. Or her. It. This is the this is the thing. This is the leader of the veil. A big old eyeball. That's robot. apparently powered by uranium. Okay. A big old eyeball robot that eats uranium. Yeah, that makes sense. Which I guess explains why they're coming after the Earth. To get that uranium, that giant nuclear reactor. Yeah, about that. We'll, we'll see what's going on with that uh, a little later. But here we go. We got ten guys left. Wow, a lot of them have died. Yeah, we're down to a third of our crew. Sorry, guys. 
We're the only ones who can actually really end the issue, as is always the case when I sing. So our survival is a bit more important than theirs, unfortunately. This stage, up until the end, is almost kind of like a bonus stage. We got our afterburners <laughs> going, so we're like flying through this thing at light speed plus. Which means, eventually, we're gonna catch up to them transports. So we get another shot of blowing them down. I would never be able to do this kind of job while listening to classical music. I get too into the music. I mean, this is good chase music, though, right? Yeah. I mean, also notice that we have a ton of special weapons at the moment, because I haven't been using them that much. I think the max you can hold is 30. The wide bomb and the napalm have a lot of stages where they are completely useless because they're bombs in space. Yeah. Makes sense. You got 76 ships. Now this stage stops playing around, though. I also want to note that uh, this game actually has branching paths. And we're almost at the branch point. The, tri the weird thing is turning into a big triangle. And your last challenge is... Well, I forgot about this part. Lasers won't do it. Yeah, these things are indestructible. Again, you need to just not touch them. You can fl thread the needle, but it's easier to just, again, not get involved with it. They do not try and crush you, unlike the square ones, but touching the green things will kill you. Alright. Now for the final challenge, and this is, this is awful. Rubber ducks. I'm actually dropping a save state here as I wanted to see if I could get the other branch option, but I am just not good enough to do it. So you can die here. Naturally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But something else can happen here too. And it involves getting touched by these guys. The rubber ducks? Yes. And I got killed. You might notice I was very carefully trying to keep my distance from them and using those, uh, missiles. Yeah. The reason for that is... As we will see shortly. If they touch you, this is the branch point. Oh no. If you get touched at any point, this happens. Touched by not a bullet. Oh no. Robot dog, no. Good reaction speed there, man. The game really, like... Also, you, like, kill the absolute hell out of these guys, and that guy takes the hell off. <laughs> they really rub this in on you, though. Yeah, if you can get through that whole thing and survive long enough not getting touched by a ship and not getting touched down... Omega will live here. Which... naturally makes this scene not happen. And changes the ending slightly. Also, I checked the Japanese and that translation is not off. <laughs> How dare you die, you robot. As she does say, Omega, Bahero. <laughs> Farewell. 
I said, the game really rubs it in. <laughs> You've done this. So I made that save state. I spent a long time, both the day before I recorded this and a little while after I recorded it, trying to get through that section to see to get the footage of the ending for the other version of the ending, and I just cannot do it. It if is beyond me. If Omega's a robot, why did they eject him into space instead of taking him home and trying to fix him? I mean, he was clearly bleeding, so he must have been like a bio-robot. <laughs> Anyways, the final stage changes things up a little bit, and I feel like it makes more sense if Omega died. We now have infinite sub-weapons. Didn't stop me from getting shot down immediately. You might have also noticed that we have a timer. If the time runs out, that is an instant game over. Oh. And uh, that timer, let me tell you, is not generous. It doesn't matter for this bit. This this first bit is going to take the same amount of time no matter what. It's auto-scrolling, so... Also, the... Bio computer is just like screaming at us down there. Not something you can really read if you're, you know, playing. Bit of a chatty robot. I like the skybox here. It is very cool again. These eye snakes might be one of the worst enemies in the game. Spam at the bio cannon everywhere. We have more of these things. And there's the there's the closing. I think if you're in the exact center, there is just enough room for your ship to fit through there, but I'm not totally confident on that. And another one of these weird robot snake things. These things... Energy. ...that are falling, I don't remember if I let it... Yeah, they if they hit the ground, they start coming towards you, spewing fire up in the air. They're not super hard to dodge, but... You can also just, you know, shoot them. They do try and track you a little bit on the ground if they hit if they start coming towards you. And now we got this happening. I don't know if I let any of these get close enough for you to really see what they are, but they are, in fact, more eyeballs. Well, computer's putting on a real show for us. I'm not entirely certain why it's doing that, but... Alright, now we have made it to the final boss of the game. And uh, you might remember what I said about having to do the whole thing in one shot when you get to a boss. That that holds true here, and this thing is a marathon. And I try. You'll see me try, but I was unable. I eventually had to resort to cheating a little bit to uh, ensure that we could see the ending, because I just could not go the whole fight without screwing it up at some point. We cannot hurt it at the moment, but eventually an eye will pop up somewhere. We need to shoot them eyes. All the eyes do something a little different. And every now and then the center will fire on these things at you, which at the start aren't really that threatening, they're just kind of area denial. But eventually we'll start trying to actually hit you. With 
eyes ever reappear, or is it...? They reappear. They, you'll know when one of them is dead. The bottom eye just kind of sucks you to the ground, which doesn't hurt you, it's just annoying. Rip. This one and the one across from it both just shoot bullets at you. But yeah, it puts you all the way back at its appearance. No matter how many of the eyes you've destroyed. There's an A-Palm, by the way. I accidentally used it. Oops. That was a good showing. You might also notice that our timer is, uh... Getting on the, on the low side. Yeah. I haven't been watching to see if it restores or not. When you die. But as mentioned, if uh, it runs out, that is an instant game over. Is it a special game over, or just a game over? Uh, you get a little bit of a scene here, but then you get the same game over scene you get every other uh, ways. You see some stuff. The, the, the cloud computer launches off, then some large things launch off, and then it just goes to the normal game over. Uh. So, kinda sort of. That one fires off the rubber duck ships at you. But if you're shooting it, they come out of where the rubber ducks are. Or they come out of where the eye is, so they tend to just die. <clears throat> Currently, none of them are dead yet. There. Now that one is dead. That one's blown up. Yeah, oh, okay. So they take a lot of punishment, the eyes. That was me considering starting the sheet, but then not doing it. <laughs> and then regretting your decisions immediately. Yep. Let's look at the timer. The timer does not restore when you die here. Fun. So if you die too many times here, you actually could be hit the point of being uh, unwinnable. Which actually means it's a good thing I decided to start cheating when I did. Because I remember what the timer was at when I finished. <laughs> this right here at my skill level is apparently literally right on the edge of it. You can still win. I remember right, I started cheating here, and then I ended up only needing to, like, reload save once or twice. Yeah. Using the bio cannon here, but I don't think this is the best spot for it most of the time. I think it does actually do more damage, but... A lot of the time, you don't really want to be sitting in line with it. And honestly, the anti-air missiles will do a lot of help in getting rid of the things that can be killed for you while you're shooting at the eyes. Including those very good tracking hexagon things. It's planet, and yet it still has this completely autonomous floating eye thing. The middle also has an eye in it, incidentally, but, uh... You can't start damaging that eye yet. The gravity eye also makes an annoying noise. But it's dead now.
Now it's actually opening its core a bit more, so sometimes you can hit the middle eye too. And this is about the point that that uh, little flare attack we've been seeing up until now becomes an actual threat. Now it's firing a lot of them and actually trying to hit you. Some of your shots are automatically going to the center anyway. Yeah, when, when there's nothing else on screen that they can hit the uh, missiles, try to go for the middle. Wait. <laughs> At that point, with only 50 seconds left, there would have been no chance of uh, victory. I'm actually not certain how you're intended to damage this thing more reasonably other than doing this, given that it's uh, pretty much constantly shooting at you when it's open now. Bio thing is not the best weapon in the game. It is in most circumstances. And it's dead. Look at that time. And notice that the time is still counting down. Rude. I don't know if it gets to zero here if you lose or not, but look at where it stops. <sighs> How? How will you pay? And now we get to see the ending that is the only one I can get. But I know what changes in the other version of the ending where Omega lives. So I'll tell you, and it's um probably not worth the effort it seems to take to get it. <laughs> Bye. We blew up that planet. Kind of a strong counter-response to an invasion, but you know. The Tetris Star, Bell's Gull is destroyed, and Balgos is annihilated. Yeah, we took out their entire planet, they're all dead. There's only six of us coming home. They're not all dead, though, because as, uh. He's mentioned, they're retreating! We did not completely wipe out their species. Just their home. And their boss. So if Omega is alive, this dialogue changes, naturally. Idea. It changes to Omega also getting a congratulatory message. And being like, oh, you don't gotta thank me. <laughs> but he's dead, so... That's one change. And the other change is... Why is the... They read. They built the Statue of Liberty again, also. That was fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm pretty sure that's more guys than we're alive in the last stage. <laughs> the other change is. The after final this, score. After this. Omega is here. <laughs> that's it. Gotten to live on Earth with humans. Can't hear you at all, I just noticed. I wonder how long it's been that way. What do you mean? I mean, you put your thing down too low and you were oh. inaudible for possibly most of the video. <laughs> Which you keep doing. <laughs> Look, I can't help it. I have it set up so we can hear ourselves for a reason. <laughs> yeah, but the game's too loud. I can't turn it up and hear. <laughs> I could re-record this whole thing, but I'm not going to. Because <laughs> we did this in post, because there was absolutely no way I was going to be able to play this game and talk at the same time. <laughs> Music composed. Valkyries. The 
translation, uh... Patch has a couple of... Japanglish... errors. <laughs> it's fine. But it's mostly good. It's fine. Moon. Light. Sonata. Just the one. Dodo? Voice. Special thanks to Catherine. Don't know who Catherine is, but. Executive producer of Viking. Yeah. It must be a company. I think so. And not, not the executive producer. Incidentally, you might want to. Quit out here if you got a problem with lights, because we're going back to the first stage. So I can show you what happens if you, like, again, fall asleep at the wheel and just don't do what you're supposed to be doing in that stage. See you again. No. Once is enough. <laughs> back to the flash zone. they repair that? Good question. Or did France just make another one? Like, right, here you go. Probably that. They, they have a spare sitting around in case of emergencies. Do we have a spare Eiffel Tower hanging out <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> so anyways, if you don't... Don't blow up the flashy ships. They go into the background. You do have one last chance here. You can shoot them while they're back there. And if you do it fast enough, you will save the building they're attacking. Oh no. And they will just keep blowing up buildings if you keep letting them. Oh no. There are enough buildings here that, again, you really have to kind of, like, let this happen if you're actually trying to shoot them down. Oh, no. There's our uh, big old nuclear power plant over there. Come into view. You also have to have just the right level of skill that you can actually survive the stage fully. While not killing these things. Oh no. I'm not certain why they... I mean, yes. But I'm not certain why they didn't just go for that immediately, considering... Why would they blow it up instead of just invading and taking the stuff out of it? Oops. Anyways, after this point... We got that... another set of those guys. And if you let these guys go, if you've gotten this far... It 
to blow it up. And once again, you get... an immediate game over. This is the game over scene. Oh, no. Anyways, that's all for today. It was load-bearing for the Earth. And later, guys.